Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a Diophantine equation. In other words, an equation with integer solutions. Integer solution equations can have infinitely many solutions, can have no solutions, or can have finitely many solutions. We're going to find out. So we have 2 to the power 3a plus 2 to the power 5b equals 2 to the power 7c. A, B, and C are all integers. And we're going to be using a lot of interesting tools, one of which is modular arithmetic. So let's go ahead and take a look. These are powers of 2, and since A, B, C are integers, these are integer numbers, powers of 2, right? So when can you have a power of 2 when you add two powers of 2? For example, think about it. If you add 2 to the first power with 2 to the second power, this is 2 plus 4, which is 6. That doesn't give us a power of 2. If you add 2 to the power 0 with 2 to the power 5, you get 33. Again, that's not a power of 2. But notice that this is one more than a power of 2. Well, duh, because this is 1. So, in binary, a number can be expressed as a sum of powers of 2, and that's unique. So, that the same thing goes for powers of 2. Powers of 2 can be expressed as themselves. For example, 2 to the power 3 is just 2 to the power 3. But it can also be written as 2 times 2 to the second power. And that can be broken down into 2 to the second plus 2 to the second. Which means if you're going to break down a power of 2 into two powers of 2, then those powers that make up the power of 2 have to be equal. In other words, 2 to the n plus 2 to the n equals 2 to the power n plus 1 is the only way to break down a power of 2. So that's what we need to have because we are solving for integers. So let's see how we can apply it to our problem. 2 to the power 3a plus 2 to the power 5b equals 2 to the power 7c. I have a feeling I've done a similar problem before. I can't remember when. Hopefully that's not the exact same problem. So here's what we need. 3a and 5p have to be equal. They're equal powers of 2, so they're going to make up n. And this number must be one more than these numbers. In other words, one less than that number is going to equal n, because they're all equal to n, right? If 7c is equal to n, then n is equal to 7c minus 1. Awesome. Now let's see how we can solve this equation, or should I say system of equations. Yes, these are kind of like linear Diophantine equations. So from an exponential Diophantine equation, we were able to reduce this problem to a linear Diophantine system. Now, let's take a look at these two equations or these two expressions. Let us let me go ahead and write it as 7c minus 5b is equal to 1. How do you solve such Diophantine equations? Well, one of the two tools you can use is a very powerful tool, modular arithmetic. So let's take a look at it in mod 5. And the reason why I pick mod 5, because one of the coefficients is 5, we're going to make it disappear. Mod 5, this is going to be 2c, and then 5b is going to be equivalent to 0, because we're looking at remainders. And this is going to be equivalent to 1 mod 5. Okay? Great. Because we do know which numbers are going to be uh, 1 mod 5. They're going to be 1 more than a multiple of 5. Since 1 more than a multiple of 5 needs to be even, we have to take c as odd. Did that make sense? I don't think so. Anyways, here's the idea. If c is equal to 0, 1, or 2, this is not going to work. But if c is equal to 3, this is going to work because 2 times 3 is equal to 6. And 6 leaves a remainder of 1 mod 5. Make sense? Okay, great. So we found, found the value of c, and it satisfies this equation, of course, because c is equal to 3 gives us b is equal to 4. But the problem is b equals 4 does not work here because we have this relationship between a and b. So this means that a must be a multiple of 5 and b must be a multiple of 3. Uh -huh. So we do know now that b is a multiple of 3. So we can write b as 3k k is an integer. So let's explore more values of b, which means more values of c, which is going to give us the uh, b equals 3k, a multiple of 3 for b. So once you find that solution for this, mod 5, 
all you have to do is add five to the existing solution. So eight is gonna be another solution, needless to check. And if you plug in C equals eight here, you're gonna get 11 for B, but 11 is not a multiple of three, so we're not gonna use these. And we have to continue. Add five, you're gonna get 13. This is gonna be 13 and 91, you need a 90, so you do need 18. And notice that here, we're adding seven every time because the coefficient of C is seven. So those numbers change mod seven, C values change mod five, and they kind of balance each other out. That's how modular arithmetic works. Interesting, right? So 18 is a multiple of three. Yay, happy face. So we're gonna take it. So these values are good, 13 and 18. Let's go ahead and plug in 18 for B here, and we're gonna find the value of A from there. If B is equal to 18, then 3A is gonna be 90, and A is gonna be 30. In this problem originally, it was asking for the minimum value of A plus B plus C, even though we could find pretty much all solutions because there are infinitely many solutions. Okay, so let's go ahead and write the minimum values. So from here, I'm getting minimum positive values, of course. A is gonna be 30, B is gonna be 18, and C is gonna be 13. So the minimum, if I didn't make any mistakes, A plus B plus C is going to be 30 plus 18 plus 13, which is 61. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know, don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.